Hello, everyone. My name is Sandra Frisbee. I'm a member of the Matrons and quite a few other things, but I'm here to give you the welcome this morning, and I hope that by the end of this service, you will have gotten some out of it. I'm from Beth Eaton Baptist Church, where my pastor is the Reverend Dr. Craig M. Jenkins. We're located at 11121 South Loomis, and we welcome you to come here. Welcome you to join us on the Facebook, on YouTube. Whatever it is that you can do, please join us and enjoy the service, and you're welcome. Colossians 3, 23, 24. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. 
Good morning, Beth Eaton. This is your charge for the week of April 25th, 2021. Join us on Sunday, May 2nd, to celebrate our pastor's 35th anniversary as pastor of Beth Eaton Baptist Church. We will have a celebration at 9 a.m. via Zoom and then join us for the 11 o'clock worship service via Facebook or YouTube. The Brotherhood Ministry will be conducting their spring cleanup at the church on Saturday, May 8th at 10 a.m. We are inviting everyone to come out and help beautify the church grounds as we prepare for our church's 130th anniversary, which will be the first Sunday in June. If it rains on May 8th, we will move the date to May 15th at 10 a.m. Sign up with the City of Chicago to schedule your in-home COVID-19 vaccination. The City of Chicago is working with mobile home health care services to provide COVID-19 vaccinations to individuals who are unable to leave their homes for medical reasons. To be eligible for this program, you must, one, live in the City of Chicago, to be a senior or person with a disability who requires in-home assistance. For further information, please contact the church office. We invite you every Sunday to our worship services, which are held at 9 a.m. via the Zoom platform. The meeting ID is 958-0500-0607. That's 958-0500-0607. The passcode is that familiar address, 11121 pound sign. Or you can call in at 312-626-6799. The ID number 958-0500-0607 pound sign. Our prayer line is open Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 9 p.m. on Fridays, 6 a.m. and 12 noon. For prayer, dial 712-775-7035. The access code is 709-315-POUND SIGN. For study of the Bible, study of God's word during the week, call the church office for the days and the times. Please continue to support the obligations of the church through your tithes and offerings. Your contributions can be given through Giveafly, Zelle, your financial institution, or simply by depositing your donation in the church mailbox. We remind you, continue to follow the guidelines set by the Centers for Disease Control. Wear your mask, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, and practice social distancing. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves by them. Thank you, stay safe, and may God continue to bless you. In Jesus' name, I would just like to say
to all the visitors and friends and and members of Beth Eden Baptist Church that someone just prayed for you. Someone thought good enough to just pray for you and I. Out of all the things that we're going through in this world, it's only one thing that we can count on is that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that someone thinks enough of you to pray for you and I. So in Jesus' name, I thank you. And I would also like to say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, for sending our pastor Jenkins to be in charge of his flock. And I am a part of his flock in Jesus' name. So I will be reading from you from Amos chapter 5, starting with verse 21 through uh, verse 24. I hate, I despise your feast, feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your frightening peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your sons, for I will not hear the melody of your strings, but let justice run down like water a righteousness like a mighty stream. I deliver this message in the name of the most high, the only high, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, peace. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world and the prince of peace that this world so desperately needs. Lord, we lift up our voice, our prayer, and praises to say thank you. Thank you for justice, peace, and faith in knowing that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. Thank you, Lord, in the midst of life difficulties, you are our rock and our redeemer. Thank you, that, thank you that Christ is our health and our strength and the stronghold of our life. And Lord, we pray that no matter what difficulties arise, that we will continually draw our hope and strength from you and we will forever look to the hills from whence cometh our help. For our help come from you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know who holds the future, and life is worth living just because he lives.
Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, dear God, we thank you for this opportunity of preaching. I ask to God that you would forgive me of my sins and forgive us of our sins. Create in me and in us, O oh God, clean hearts. Renew the right spirit in us, dear God, and just touch us with your love. Lord, I ask that you speak in such a way that we can leave this place declaring that you yet live. You are our God. You are our Savior. And we just want to say thank you for allowing this time of preaching to take place. Bless, we ask. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Chicago's Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions recorded a song years ago. The Sylvia said, people get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. So people get ready for the train to Jordan. You see, it's picking up passengers coast to coast. Faith is the key to open the doors and board them. There's hope for all among those loved the most. Now, there ain't no room for the hopeless sinner whom would hurt all mankind just to save his own. Have pity on those whose chances grow thinner. For there's no hiding place against the kingdom's throne. So people, people, people get ready. There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. Don't need no ticket. Just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. The late Sam Cook sang a song. It's been a long time coming. But I believe a change is going to come. Someone has said that we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. On this past Tuesday, the country was able to breathe after a year of grieving the death of George Perry Floyd Junior, as Floyd was on the ground with then officer Derek Chauvin's knee on his neck, George Perry Floyd Jr. cried out 27 times, I can't breathe. And for nine minutes and 29 seconds, George Perry Floyd Jr. was on the ground pleading for his life. The jury found then officer Derek Chauvin guilty of all three counts of murder that occurred on May 25th, 2020 in the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. The initial report by the police department 
recorded that George Perry Floyd Jr. died from a medical incident during police interaction. We praise God today. Yes, we do. For the verdict that was handed down on Tuesday. We praise God today for young Miss Darnella Frazier, who at the age of 17 recorded with her cell phone the entire incident. We also praise God for Attorney General for the state of Minnesota, Keith Ellison, for taking charge of the investigation because something was not right with the police report. To take charge of the investigation, then to charge and prosecute Derek Chauvin. The reality of some unprofessional police officers is still with us. There are three other officers who have to give an account for this tragedy. Racial injustice is still happening today. And racial justice is still a long way off. But the guilty verdict is a beginning to bring forth a change that is desperately needed in this nation. A study by Aliyah Shante entitled Know Their Names, reported in Al Zazira.com, their website, between 2014 and 2020, that 1,920 blacks have been killed by police in this country. Some of the names are familiar. Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Philando Castile, Brianna Taylor, Dante Wright, Rayshawn Brooks, Daniel Prude, Antia Jefferson, Stephon Clark, Laquan McDonald, and so many others whose names are added to George Perry Floyd Jr. From the slave ships to slavery in this country, from the Jim Crow era, to the civil rights era. Progress has been made. And even though the Jim Crow era is over, we have, as Michelle Alexander calls it, the new Jim Crow. And they wear suits. We're living in a time in which we still see white privilege in so many areas of life affecting the lives of black and brown people. Though great strides have been made, we have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. In looking at our nation, it seems that steps are being made, but too often they're going in the wrong direction. There is restlessness in our land, homelessness, joblessness, economic injustice, and other social concerns are evident right now. Vice President Kamala Harris said, a measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. <laughs> Let me say it again. A measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. There are some who think that because of whatever prosperity one may have, that there is no need to be concerned about others. That leads to our text today. Because God is speaking 
as God spoke through the prophet Amos. And Amos wasn't anybody special. He, he was just an ordinary shepherd. An ordinary man that was given a task to declare to the people of Israel that they needed to get their lives right with God. Some areas that Amos addressed are the neglect of God's word, idolatry, pagan worship, greed, corrupted leadership, and oppression of the poor. The concerns that Amos had addressed, that he addressed, are just as real today. There are those who turn away from God's word. There are those who are involved in idol worship with the material things of life. And even leadership in this country and across this world are real and the oppression that is bring, that's coming forth affecting the marginalized people across this nation is still going on today. And as God spoke through Amos, God speaks the same words to us today. Listen to the words. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fattened peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your song. For I will not hear the melody of your string instruments, but let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. God is speaking to us. And I just want to say that out of this text, there are two things I want to just lift up and, and then we're just going to go on. The first is that God does not want Superficial worship. God does not want meaningless, shallow, or hollow worship. We say how much we love the Lord, yet we fail to grasp the power that we have as believers. We lie as Christians. We gossip as Christians. We put on a performance on Sundays or trying to give the impression that we're living holy, but when we get home, our lives are not what they ought to be, and we find ourselves superficial, superficial in our Bible reading, superficial in our faith, superficial in what we say we believe. And God is saying, I hate that. I despise all that you do. You're just wearing a mask. I, I, I don't like what it is you're doing. You're superficial. Even with great advancements that have been made too many times, believers have fallen short and have not utilized the power for change that the Lord has given us. Because we become lax, we, we become satisfied with our own personal advancements. I got mine, you get yours. Instead of realizing that we need one another, we need to help one another. We need to make a change by supporting one another and working together and loving together and doing what God has called his people to do. Now what happened to Derek Chauvin was accountability. And I like that because there's been a lot of discussion. Some people are saying justice. But uh, Ellison said justice is when there's total restoration. Chauvin received a verdict guilty because he was account had to be accountable for his actions. The verdict was correct, but we cannot celebrate as if all is well now. A few years ago when uh, Barack Obama became president, we thought everything was all right. 
But after him, we had a Donald Trump to run into. And we found that things are still not as they ought to be. And we got excited. When, when Harold Washington was mayor in Chicago, we were excited about it. But after Harold died, oh, what are we going to do? Martin King led the movement. But after Martin died, oh, what are we going to do? My brothers and sisters, we're starting to miss, miss the point of the power that God gives us. He gives us power for a reason. If someone falls down, God raises somebody else up to keep on marching. And God is saying, I've given you as a believer the power to carry forth the message of righteousness. Help me, Holy Ghost. There are too many areas where there must be justice. Many will celebrate the verdict, but there's too much work to be done to be getting lost in celebrations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People were excited. But there's too much work that needs to be done. Chauvin was found guilty, but the justice narrative has not ended. We need justice for women, for pay equality. Uh, just for an example, we, we need justice in regards to the Denver's, uh, discrimination tactics used to keep people down. We need justice in regards to uh, immigration. We need justice regarding institutional reform. We need justice when we look at our schools and so much more. Now, you, we say we're Christians, that we love the Lord, and we know that through Christ we can do all things, yet... We're not using the power that God has given us to make a difference. And I, I just want you to know that I pray that you will recognize what happened on this past Tuesday, how things began to change. We can't let up now. you got to strike the iron while the iron is hot. There are too many people who have been mistreated, too many of our brothers in jail now over, over little crack or cocaine who are serving more time than other people have done heinous crimes. We need to know we got to have people who will stand up for right and righteousness. We need to teach our children about civil rights. We need to teach our children that we need to go into the law. Don't worry about music all the time, but maybe we need some more lawyers and, and engineers and others who can stand in the gap because the world still is not right, but God has given us power to make the difference. That is what we're looking at today. God is saying, I'm tired of y'all just celebrating. It's time to do something. I'm tired of y'all just having a party. It's time to do something. There's work to be done. We can make great strides in this country because there's a change that's going to come. And the only way it's going to come is when we allow God to be our strength. This is what Amos was declaring. If you want to be blessed by God, let judgment run down like waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. We rejoice today, yet we cannot stop working until there is change. Change that gets rid of systemic racism. Change that brings forth love. Change that shatters glass ceilings. Change that makes us treat one another right. Change that makes Congress legislate into law the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. We made progress, but we got to keep on working because a change is going to come. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's, it's going to come. The joy of knowing that the changes will take place is found when we look at Jesus and what was said about Jesus even before Jesus was born. Isaiah 53 put it this way, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him 
sm stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, yeah, that's it right there. With his stripes, we are healed. When Jesus gave his life, when he died, and when he rose from the dead, we were given power to make a change. Because of being in relationship with God, because of knowing who God is, we receive power. We got power on resurrection morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All power, Jesus said, is in my hand. Power because he gave his Holy Spirit to be in us, to make a difference in the world. We have power. We have power. We have strength. We have joy. We have essence. We have victory. We can make it a change. I said a change. A change is going to come. My brothers and sisters, I don't know how you feel, but there are young people who need to know that they can make a difference in the world. There are young people who need to know they got to keep on marching for justice, keep on standing tall, doing that which is right. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad that I learned something about how my foreparents told the story. In the civil rights movement, I didn't understand it, but they put it this way, ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on marching, keep on marching, marching to freedom land. I ain't going to let injustice turn me around. I ain't going to let discrimination turn me around. I ain't going to let Jim Crow turn me around. I'm going to keep on marching. I'm going to keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Somebody here today ought to know that a change is going to come. Now, how do you know? Well, if you're a Christian, the Lord changed you. He took you from your mess and changed your life around. And as God changed you, God is saying you can change the world. You can make a difference in the world. They ain't going to let nobody, 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 nobody turn me around. They're going to keep on shooting, but I'm going to keep on marching. They're going to keep on shooting. I'm going to keep on praying. I believe that God gives us power when we stretch out on his word. That God gives us strength when we get weak. That God gives us joy in the time of sorrow. That God holds us up when others try to tear us down. Ain't going to let nobody turn me around. I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand. I build my hopes on things eternal. I'm going to hold on. up to freedom land <laughs> ain't gonna let nobody turn turn me around turn me around ain't gonna let nobody turn me around I'm gonna keep on walking keep on talking marching up to freedom land. God, thank you for allowing me to share this word today. I pray that we have been encouraged on our journey. There's so much for us to do. And I'm asking God that you will empower us to make the change. Let us do our part. Empower us, God, to stand for right and righteousness. Empower us, God, 
to do good though the world may be doing bad. Oh God, use us for your glory. Use us, we pray. Use us, God. We want to say thank you. Thank you for the verdict, uh, yeah, this week. In regards to George Perry Floyd Jr., in regards to the officer Chauvin who was found guilty on all three counts, God, we want to say thank you because we saw with our eyes murder. We saw it with our eyes. And thank you for somebody standing up for right and righteousness. Oh, God, help us. Black, white, red, brown, yellow, whatever color it is, to be able to live our lives so that you can get the glory, God. Thank you. Thank you. Turn me around, I'm going to keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up to freedom land. Change is going to come. Change is on the way right now. I want to extend the invitation to let you know that a change comes when you give your life to the master, to Christ, who has fixed it so that you are empowered to make a difference. Oh, his name is Jesus. Let him in your life. Let him in your life. You could do that right now by just simply saying, Lord, come in. And you can be saved right now. The word of God says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the invitation. You can call the church, every code 773-233-6953. Just let it be known you're saved. Let it be known that the Lord is the head of your life. And if you need a church home, we will welcome you here. If you're living out of the city and you need a church home, we will help you find a church home. Amen. At the close of every service, we have a benediction that we share. And I ask that you would share in this benediction by repeating these words after me. May God be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up. I just want somebody to say, I love you. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Church family, most of all, I want you to know that the Lord wants you to be saved. God bless you in Jesus' name. six months it's good to be here just to hear the songs of Zion just to see one another hallelujah hallelujah God bless you but while praying on my knees I heard the small voice speak to me stand still my child and concentrate on me For it's already done Hallelujah It's already done Thank you Jesus Just stretch out on your faith Knowing I will make the way Receive your healing Receive your miracle 
If you only believe It's already done I have not seen Nor you have heard All the good things that are in store For those who love Open up doors, no man can close. You gotta keep the faith, never give up. He's worth it out for you. For you, oh, it's already done. Hallelujah, it's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Just stretch out. It's already